This time UK Brewery Project, it's Kellam Island. <laughs> Kellam Island Brewery is based in Sheffield and was founded by Dave Wicket, who prefers to just be known as Wicket. Wicket was an economics lecturer at Sheffield Polytechnic, and it was whilst he was doing this that he bought the Alma pub in 1981, which was based in the industrial area of the city, Kellam Island. Um, the area was renowned for its steel industry, but as the 80s drew on, the steel mill closed and the area became run down and became associated as sort of the red light district of the city. Um, most would think it probably was a terrible move to open a pub in this area. And I think quite a few probably said, told Wicket this, but um, Wicket was an active member of Camera and um, he was uh, publishing reports for them into the anti-competitiveness of breweries, of the big national breweries. And uh, he opened the pub and he focused on serving cask beers, which drew in a sort of dedicated crowd of drinkers. Um, he continued to lecture during the day and run the pub in the evenings. Um, funnily, when he was first starting, he originally asked Wards, who are a local brewery, to supply ale to him, but they said they would only supply the beer drop bright, which is sort of, okay, it's filtered, um, no yeast in there, and I don't think it meets camera's criteria for the definition of real ale. Um, Wicket declined their offer and instead bought Landlord Ale from Timothy Taylor's, not too far away from them. After seeing the success of Landlord sales at the pub, Wards actually changed their tune and began supplying him with cast beer until I believe their demise in the 90s. Um, through the 80s, the brewing scene in Sheffield deteriorated with sort of consolidation amongst the big six national brewers and uh, some local breweries closing as well. All through this, Wicket could see that there was demand for good brewed ales and not just a direction of sort of the smooth flow and um, keg beers that were available. In 1990, Wicket opened up his Kellam Island microbrewery in an outbuilding behind the beer garden of the pub. Um, I think at this stage, Kellam Island was the first new brewery in Sheffield in 100 years. And the first beer that he brewed was Fat Cat Bitter, which was a best bitter. And I, it's still brewed today, but it's under the name Kellam Best. Sadly, I don't have that one here. So I'm gonna be opting for another of their bitters, which is the pride of Sheffield. And where do I put my bottle opener? Let's crack this one open. I don't have the branded glassware, but uh, I thought I'd put it in similar um, ale style glasses and I'll try and not show any branding of who it belongs to. I'll put the cap on ever so slightly. All right, here we go. Um, I'm just gonna clear the glass a bit. Sorry, I've just washed it. I'm <laughs> just clearing the glass of the bubble sticking. It smells like a bitter. It does smell like a bitter. Um, this one is 4%, drop the cap, and uh, talks about Wicket opening the brewery on the back. That's nice. It smells nice, let's try it. It's a bitter. Um, it's not the best bitter I've had. I'm gonna put the rest in. It's a bitter. Um, it will do, it will do. <laughs> um, right, so the microbrewery um, was using a five barrel brewing kit that Wicked had bought from the closed Oxford Bakehouse. And um, because Wicket was vegetarian, he didn't use finings made from fish bladder in his beers. So I believe he used, must have used like Irish moss at that stage, making his beers ahead of the game at that stage being vegetarian. Um, the reason that he opened the brewery was based off the government's new beer orders that came into um, being at the end of 1989, I think in December. Um, the beer orders restricted the number of tied pubs that could be owned by the large breweries and also required guest beers to be sold in tentative pubs or tenants could ask to sell a guest beer. Now I'm not gonna go into the beer orders exactly and the impact on this video, but 
for Wicket, he's seen this as an opportunity and that's why he set up the brewery. At the same time as setting up Callum Island, uh, Wicket was working with an American partner to open uh, the Old Toad Brew Pub, which is in uh, Rochester, New York State, which sold uh, craft beers and ales from the US and the UK. So he had a, another venture going out there. Through the 90s, um, the big brewers closed their operations in Sheffield whilst Wicket continued to work and expand on his beer range. Um, with Kellum Island soon to become the biggest and only brewery in Sheffield due to closures of those big six breweries. He was so busy, he was finally able to pack in his job as a lecturer to focus full time on being a publican, brewer and drayman because he was out delivering the stuff. In 1999, the brewery moved to a new location. It was the car park next to the Fat Cat pub, which was owned by the local authority. They sold part of it to Wicket and he installed a custom built 55 barrel capacity brewery on there. I believe the old brewery at this stage was converted into a sort of museum um, with all the items that were in there. Um, Wicket had taken on help um, uh, with expanding his brewery and I, the only reference I find was so in 2004 he had a head brewer, assistant brewer, a drayman and a brewery manager work in there so he had four other people beside himself. Um, people do say Wicket wasn't easiest to work with and over the years staff would come and go but even if they left on unfavourable terms they were inspired what they learned and seen and some of them went on to set up their own breweries based off that. Um, 2004 was an important year for Cullen Brewery because this was the year that Pale Rider, their 5.2% pale ale, um, was named Champion Beer Britain by camera. Demand for the beer went through the roof after that award and Callum tried as best they could to keep up with that demand. Um, as it is a camera award winning beer, I'm gonna crack that one open. I'm looking forward to it. I've not had this before, I don't believe. Again, non-branded glass, but I'm gonna, and it's still a bit wet. I have just washed it. Didn't pour it all in again, but that will do. Glass looks terrible. Just give it a little tap twice to get some of the bubbles off the edge. Not the best of glasses. It will do, it will do. So that's a pale ale, clear, much lighter than the, uh, the bitter. Soft nose, soft nose, soft sort of um, hop nose, I should say. That's a pale ale. Um, <laughs> the funniest thing about both of these is, I, I would say they're nondescript on category. It's good, but I wouldn't be able to tell you that was Kellum. And I won't be able to tell you that was Kellum either. Um, they are very much, that is the beer style category, bang on. Uh, I wonder what some of the other beers like, but yeah, that's, that's nice. That's yeah, for me. Um, also in 2004, uh, alongside winning um, the um, Champion Beer Britain, uh, Wicket was helping two guys set up a brewery in an outhouse on their estate. That brewery was Formbridge. And they have said that without Wicket, there would have been no Formbridge brewery. Um, Wicket was in charge of hiring the two young brewers who had brewed for Formbridge. And uh, one of those so happened to be a gentleman called Martin Dickey. I wonder what happened to him. Hmm. In 2007, Kellam Island had once again outgrown their brewing capacity and the brewery moved to a new site just a minute's walk away from the current brewery. Um, a new 100 barrel kit was installed, nearly doubling their capacity from the 55 they currently had. In January 2010, Wicket was diagnosed with bone cancer. I was given six months to live. But Wicket was a fighter 
and he threw himself into work. He helped set up a new microbrewery at Welbeck Abbey using the original brewing equipment from the Fat Cat. So I believe he took it from the museum in a sense. Um, he also worked with Sheffield University to create a graduate course for microbrewers. Sadly though, on the 16th of May 2012, Wicket died aged 64. The brewing business was passed on to his son Edward, who is still the managing director of the business, so it's still a independent family owned business. Um, Wicket influenced others to follow his lead and he could be said to be behind Sheffield's brewing scene taking off before the progressive beer duty um, came in in 2002, which sort of kick-started other cities such as London and Manchester to have a, a vibrant brewing scene with microbreweries. Um, the brewery seemed to continue to expand on its range, offering an ever-changing um, ever monthly special brew, trying new hops and beer styles. The next big event for me to note is their rebrand um, to the current artwork in 2008, uh, 2019 in April. So I do like uh, the artwork on there, really, really beautiful on the bottles and on the cans. So they look like scenes from a graphic novel. Um, I said they look great on um, bottles, but they look even better on cans with the wraparound. Um, it, you get just even more of that brilliant uh, visual in a sense on it. I do like them. It's a really, really cool how they've done it. Although these are not the, the standard. These look like a bit, a bit like Banksy style or something at that stage. Um, they're good, but they're special, so they stand out versus the um, sort of standard ones. During um, the lockdown in 2020, um, Kellam Island's um, direct ordering service picked up some of the slack from the loss of pub trade. Um, they also got involved with um, car swaps with breweries from around the country um, so that they could offer their guest beers in poly pins for local delivery. So they do um, poly pins of beer, um, at, but they only drop them off locally, but they would send a few casks to another brewery. The other brewery would send their casks back up to them and then they could sell them on as guest beers. So people weren't just ordering, say, I don't know, Pride of Sheffield or um, Pale Rider. They could also order something else from another brewery, which is sort of supportive, but that means down in the other area, up in the other area, they would be able to buy Callum Island beers. Nice breweries supporting each other like that. Um, I didn't order direct from Callum um, as I wanted a mixed case and the only thing they offered mixed was cans. Uh, I think four cans, but um, everything else was like, you had to buy eight of these, eight of these. I wanted a mix, a variety, which is sort of why I've got this and I ended up having to buy from two different um, shops to get them. So let's go on to their core beers. So we have Easy Rider, um, which is the one that I was on about here. I mentioned Power Rider as well. Um, Easy Rider, no, uh, yeah, Easy Rider, uh, which is, have I said Power Rider? I didn't have Power Rider. I'm talking nonsense. I've I described this as Power Rider, didn't I, the whole time, and I don't have Power Rider. I got Easy Rider, which is 4.3%. Um, this isn't the award winning beer. <laughs> it's Pale Rider that's the award winning beer, isn't it? Wait a second, let me check. Yeah, I, I totally messed that up earlier. Anyway, so uh, I've, I had ordered Pale Rider and I didn't get Pale Rider. Um, I got Easy Rider in, as a replacement in a sense instead. Um, so this isn't the, the, I've not had the beer that won the Champion Beer Britain. So Easy Rider's a 4.3% Pale Ale. The Pale Rider is a 5.2% Pale Ale. Obviously higher ABV, that's the one that won. This is its um, younger brother, let's say. Then we have um, Kellum Best, which is a 3.8% bitter. And then you've got the Pride of Sheffield, which is their 4% bitter. So this is um, higher ABV than their best. And it's very bitter, yes. Um, and then they have um, Riders of the Storm, a 4.5% pale ale. They definitely like the whole idea of the riders motorbiking. I'm not sure um, 
if he was a biker or not, and that's something I should have probably looked up now that I think about it. Um, it should be noted that these beers are sort of available in both bottles and cans, so they they bottle, they put them in both methods. Um, seasonal wise, they have uh, Wild Rider, which is a 5.5% American IPA. They have a Bet Noir, which is 5.5% stout. Um, IPA of the Dead, which is a 5.9% IPA, which is for you know Cinco de Mayo and May normally. Um, they also do a, a Blondale as well, um, and um, from here I've got like a Overseer, which is a 5% English IPA, and I've also got Night Rider lovely can design on that one which is a 4.5 percent vanilla milk no no this is just a stout isn't it this isn't a vanilla stout this is just the stout they do have over here no that is yeah that's the stout this is getting them mixed up vanilla milkshake pale ale at 4.3 percent and then i've got a session pale ale 4.3 you can see the like the 4.3 number don't they um, no, this is, I've called it Session Palau, this is called Stop Telling Us What To Brew. Jeez, I'm really not with it, am I? I think it's too early for me. <laughs> it is early-ish. Um, right, do you know what? I'm going to cut quickly and get another glass and crack open one of these special ones of theirs. All right, got myself a um, glass and I'm going to open up their milkshake uh, Palau. Ooh. Nice bit of hiss. Let's pull this in. Lovely big head on that. <laughs> Told you, it's going well today, isn't it? They are very Banksy like the artwork there. So, get my nose right in there. Interesting. I wouldn't quite say it's a milkshake um, flavour, no. I know what they're getting at. Um, what are the hops in that? Hmm. No, they don't say. The only reason it's la um, milkshake is because they put lactose on it. That That's the only potential reason. Um, can't think of anything else that it would be for that reason. But yeah, the hops are in there and it's it's okay. I wouldn't call that a milkshake. Um, right, I'm going to say this really brings me to the end because once again, award-wise, this is sort of a brewery that doesn't seem to publish their award history. So apart from their um, Pale Rider, not the Easy Rider, that won the Champion Beer of Britain, they don't really um, have much that they advertise on award-wise on their website. Um, so this has been the UK Brew Project. This has been Keller Island. Until next time, take care, everyone.